thought we'd kick off episode 86 of Monster Kid Radio with the song Scaramanga from the band The Phantom Four. It appears on their album Morgana. You can find out more about them over at their website, thephantom4.com, or follow the link in the show notes over at monsterkidradio.net. That's the website for our show, Monster Kid Radio, the podcast where we celebrate the classic and sometimes not so classic genre cinema of yesteryear. I am your host, Derek M. Cook, and I want to welcome you to the show this Thursday. Now, what we've got cooked up this time around for the show is something that I didn't prepare. I didn't produce. I didn't get this audio. It was provided to Monster Kid Radio by Scott and Tracy Morris. Now, Scott and Tracy have appeared on this show in the past separately. I'm one of Scott's co-hosts over at the 1951 Downplace podcast. But Scott and Tracy, they play in non-genre, non-monster movie fields. They play... In Disney, specifically, they play in Disney, Indiana, which is the name of their podcast. You can find it over at DisneyIndiana.com. They just hit 150 episodes. Now that's an accomplishment. So I think it goes without saying. Congratulations to Scott and Tracy for making that milestone with their own podcast and for thinking about Monster Kid Radio when they were on vacation. So here's the thing about Disney Indiana. Scott and Tracy, they go to the Disney parks pretty often. And when they do, they bring their recorder, they record park audio, and they share it with their listeners. You can hear audio from their recent trips to Disney in recent episodes of their own podcast. Well, On their last trip to Disney down in Florida, they spent some time at Universal and they recorded some audio from a Universal attraction. They went to the Universal's Horror Makeup Show and recorded the show for us here at Monster Kid Radio. So that's what you're going to hear in this episode here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the business out of the way. Again, I mentioned our website address. It's monsterkidradio.net. From here, you can find links to everything that we do here on Monster Kid Radio when we're not putting together an episode of the podcast. You can find links to our Facebook group. You can find links to our YouTube channel, our Live 365 channel, our Flickr album, everything that you need to know Monster Kid Radio-wise between episodes you can find right there, including the show notes for every episode that we put out of the show. These show notes include things like links to to the bands that appear on the show, with their permission, of course, or links to the Rondo Awards, rondoaward.com. If you head over there, you'll see that Monster Kid Radio was nominated, along with 1951 Downplace, for a Rondo Hatton Classic Horror Award in the category of Best Multimedia Horror. That's category number 23. Go through the entire ballot, check it out, find the categories that you feel comfortable voting in, and send in your vote by email to Taraco at AOL.com. That's T-A-R-A-C-O at AOL.com. Now, it's old school. You have to type in your real name and just type in the categories and who you're voting for in each category in your email ballot. Voting is by email only, and the deadline is May 5th. So get in there, vote for your favorites, and make sure your voice is heard at the Rondo Awards. You know who else was nominated for a Rondo Award? Well, Christopher R. Mim's film, The Giant Spider, and I bring this up because Christopher R. Mim is going to be in the Seattle area in my neck of the woods, sort of, two and a half hours, give or take, depending on how traffic is, but he's going to be in my neck of the woods for Crypticon Seattle. It's taking place May 23rd, 24th, and 25th, and check this out. He's going to be bringing his movie, The Late Night Double Feature, to Seattle to show, and I'm going to get to interview him live before the movie. I'm going to do that in front of an audience. It's going to be a lot of fun. Of course, I'm going to have my recorder, but if you're going to be in the area, you got to track me down and look me up and say hi, and, well, we'll just talk monster movies. It'll be a blast. A little bit closer to my home and a little bit sooner is the HP Lovecraft Film Festival and Cthulhu Con that's happening April 11th, 12th, and 13th here in Portland, Oregon. Oh boy, this is going to be a big one. This is huge. I'm an official guest along with people like, you know, you know what? You don't care that I'm a guest, but you do care that Doug Bradley is a guest. The man who played Pinhead is a guest at this year's Lovecraft Film Festival and Cthulhu Con. I'm going to be on one of the panels. I'm going to be recording for Monster Kid Radio. I'm going to be the guy wearing the Hawaiian shirt who looks like he's having the most fun in the room. So track me down. uh, Let me know that you listen to Monster Kid Radio and we'll talk monsters. We'll talk Cthulhu, we'll talk Lovecraft, we'll talk whatever you want to talk about. Just keep in mind I'll have my recorder and there's a good chance I'll put you on the show. Head over to hplfilmfestival.com to learn more about that 
if you are planning on attending, you probably want to buy your tickets if they're even still available in advance because you're going to see some awesome things. These panels are fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing Curse of the Crimson Altar on the big screen again. The first time I saw it was at a previous Lovecraft Film Festival, and I'm going through the list here. The 1970 film Equinox is going to be shown on the big screen. Now, this movie is a trip. Claymation, Dennis Murin effects, Forrest J. Ackerman's voice, Fritz Lieber in a cameo role. I mean, this is going to be a lot of fun to check out as well. And I was looking at the list of short films that are going to be shown. It's insane the number of shorts. It looks like there's over 30 short films that are going to be shown over the course of the weekend. Chances are you're not going to be able to see everything because there's just so much stuff here. Brian and Gwen Callahan do a bang-up job putting together the Lovecraft Film Festival. They've been doing it for the past couple of years, and they just keep getting better, making the festival more and more fun, and coming up with more and more reasons for me to just give up the idea of sleep that weekend. It's going to be a real treat. Again, there will be links to all of this in the show notes. And if you head over to our website, click on the links and podcast button across the top of the page. You'll find a link directly to Disney Indiana. Again, Congratulations to Scott and Tracy for hitting that 150th episode. That's just incredibly cool. Congratulations to Scott and Tracy for hitting that mark and for putting together one of the best Disney podcasts around. I mean, Disney Indiana, if you aren't listening to the show, even if you're not a fan of traditional Disney, there's still a lot that you're going to like listening to the show. And you're going to hear about that here in a second. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and dive in from that recording of the Universal's Horror Makeup Show from Universal Orlando, courtesy of Scott and Tracy. C-3PO. Loki. Mace Windu. Dr. Bruce Banner. Captain Rex. Venom. Princess Leia. Jean Grey. Darth Maul. Nick Fury. Grand Moff Tarkin. Captain America. Lando Calrissian. Cyclops. What do all these characters have in common? Well, two of them were played by Samuel L. Jackson. A couple of them were played by Hammer Films veterans Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Come on, guys. You know this. Well, of course we do, Jessica. Just like Mickey Mouse and Captain Jack Sparrow, they're all now Disney characters. Hello, I'm Tracy of the Disney Indiana Podcast, and my co-host Scott and I enjoy talking about all aspects of the House of Mouse, and that includes their newest properties, Marvel and LucasArts. We also talk about Disney resorts, the cruise line, theme parks, and whatever else Mickey has to offer. Which includes movies, Imagineering, video games, and collectibles. You'll never know what we'll decide to talk about. So check us out at www.disneyindiana.com or do a search for the Disney Indiana podcast on iTunes because now we've got a lot more to talk about. And don't forget about those other quote-unquote Disney characters like, well, Sully. Fozzie Bear. Buzz Lightyear. Link Hogthrob. Doug. Janice. Merida. Pepe. Bruce. Ralph the Dog. Wally. Dr. The Disney Bunsen Indiana Honeydew. podcast. Syndrome. Even after five years, we are still miles away from the nearest Main Street, USA. We are not listed on the map, but you can join us at www.disneyindiana.com. The question is, where did the horror host go when they have no other place to go? And the answer is, the horror host graveyard! <laughs> Make sure you swing by the horror host graveyard and dig up the fetid, rotting remains of horror hosts from the past, present, and future. Man, you can go there and find information about all the great horror hosts, old and new. It's like the manifold of monster mayhem. Horror hosts from the past. You can find out about Zachary, Vampira, Goulardi. All kinds of great stuff. You've got people's music, you got movie clips, you got horror hosting clips. And you can find out about current horror hosts like Penny Dreadful, that's me, The Bone Jangler, Dr. Gang Green, and uh, Professor Anton Griffin, Carlos Borloff. They're all there waiting for you in the graveyard. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Oh, we know how to party there. Oh, I'm telling you, rock and roll, go blue, green, purple. I mean, then, oh, we get it on. What you should do is go to horror host graveyard. Graveyard.com. I like to visit the horrorhostgraveyard.com. Horrorhostgraveyard.com. This is 
is Jackie Ray Naaman Jones. I play Debbie in Monos, The Hands of Fate, and you're listening to Monster Kid Radio.
appreciate some of the effects you saw on the screens here on the stage. And if we have time, I'm going to give you all a sneak peek at a project I've been working on for a kid's show. It's right over there behind the curtain. That's it? Yeah. Let's see it. But no, 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 no. What's wrong? I want to save it for you. No, I want to show everybody. I'm excited to see it. You see what they see. What? Come over here. It's a surprise. Okay. Don't touch that curtain. Okay. All right, but do me a favor. What? Go out in the audience. Find me a lovely lady okay. whose family doesn't need her anymore. A volunteer. I will do that. Let's see. Let me get my hair. Here's the thing. I generally don't pick people that want to do it. Um, we try picking people that have raised their hands in the past, but they turned out to be freaks. <laughs> so it's more fun to get somebody that's just a little bit shy. So I want to get somebody that's not even making any eye contact. Generally, they think that I can't see them if they don't look at me. Somebody who came in here and thought it was a ride <laughs> of some sort. I think I found the person I want. I don't know why. Pardon me, excuse me. I am strangely drawn to this lady right here. Let's hear for you! Yeah. Come with me. Just put your back down. You guys take pictures, okay? Yeah. Rise, my friend. Here she comes. Yeah, come on. Thank you. She is. Spanish? No English? Oh, perfect! I'm sorry, right. nobody else speaks English in here, you're fine. Okay, right this way. Alright, so Spanish. Okay, so, stand right here on the Puerto de Trap, right here. So, um, como se llama? What's your name? Vilma. Vilma. I am Alex. Mucho gusto. Vilma. Hola, Vilma. Ay, 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 Oh, uh, is Vilma? Vilma. Yeah, Vilma. Vilma. Okay, Vilma. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, don't they give it? Bolivia! 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 Let's take a picture. Let's take a photo. Take a photo. Here we go. Tag me on Facebook. All right. Is that your family? Uh, are you married? Esposo? Is he here? Yes. Yeah. Esposo? Yeah. 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 There he is. Hi there. Uh, where are you from? Uh, uh, how many years have you been married? Uh, Cuantos años casada? Banked at 20. 20? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 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 After 20 years of marriage, you deserve an upgrade. Mm -hmm. I got parts here for a new husband, yeah. a Nuevo Esposo. Sweet. All right. <laughs> All right. Pull out your monos like that. There you go. Look at that. You're holding hands. Oh. Here's the other one. Here's the third one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give him. Five hands, so he's already more fun than that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you need a foot too. I'm sorry, it is a little smelly. There's some fungus growing in the toes here. <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Oh, yeah. I like her. All right, don't build over here to the counter. I'm making the butt out of the fridge. Come right this way. Then you put the brussels. Okay. Got some more body parts here. <laughs> I'm not going to scare you anymore. Don't worry. I'm going to make you my assistant, my assistente. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, all right. I need you to roll up your left sleeve. Okay. Thank you. Belma, I'm sure you're wondering where we get all of those severed limbs and body parts from. But in Spanish, of course. <laughs> well, I'll show you where. Give me the arm. No. Give me the arm. No. Come on. Give me the arm. Let me get somebody else. Belma. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt her with this big, scary knife. I'm going to use a smaller, sharper one. Can I see your models, please? Thank you. Uh, that's beer. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to take this knife here and uh, cut your arm off. Kotar uh, Subrasso. Wow. Sangre, 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 sangre. And this is one to uh, duele like a madre. <laughs> It's not going to hurt like a mother, no. Uh, but I need you to convince uh, people out here that it does hurt a mucho. So when I start kotaring, uh, I'm going to need you to <laughs> scream out loud, grita, mas, uh, like you're in a horror movie. So I'm, I'm going to go one, two, three, you grita. All right, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Bien. All right, here we go. Let's get to cut. One, two, three! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Um, there are kids here. Oh. You want me to cut a kid? No. <laughs> you should talk to them. Oh, sure. Talk to the kids. You can relax, Noma. Kids. Listen up. <laughs> All of them 
knives and blades you're going to see on the stage or on the screen today, they're all fake. Okay? <laughs> Look at that. They're dull like this, or they're plastic like this, or they're dull and plastic like the Kardashians. <laughs> have been developed by professionals with years of training who, when they're not drinking, are pretty good at their job. <laughs> so don't try this at home, buddy. That's right. You try it at your friend's house. <laughs> don't do that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, Bill. Here we go. Your big moment. Say to your arm. Adios, Brasso. One, two, three! We <laughs> Folks, this knife gag was developed for us by Tom Savini, who's the makeup artist behind the original Dawn of the Dead movie. Oh. Now what we have okay. is a fake knife with a retractable blade, like so. Cut out here for the arm, but we start with the knife retracted into the handle first. I start cutting, squeezing this blood bulb here that's behind the handle. I'll let the knife catch on the arm. Boom, boom. Looks like he goes in the arm just like that. The knife is obviously fake, and Vilma is on arm. Thank you, Vilma! Here we go. You must go through tons of blood when you work on a movie. Yeah, on a film set, we're actually going to go through buckets of blood. Nice. How many of you have seen the original Psycho or Night of the Living Dead? Popular movies, yeah. They film those in black and white, obviously. In those movies, they used chocolate syrup to simulate blood. They did that because red tends to look gray and black and white. It doesn't look very creepy or realistic. But in color films, you do need some blood that's red and realistic looking, and I like to get some blood that's freshly squeezed. Ooh, where did you get the heart? eBay. Nice. Yeah. And then I fill it with fake blood. Now, where do you get the fake blood? Well, I used to buy it. But it's kind of expensive, so now I just make it. You do? Maybe. Tell us how to make it. That's awesome. Yeah, you folks want to know how to make fake blood? Yeah. What you need is a quart of corn syrup, common green, peanut butter, some red food coloring, the blue food coloring, and then you go to mix it up. It's these very important. <laughs> but you really got to be careful because it could actually stain your clothing. Okay. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> this is the karma I was telling you. Okay, I'm gonna get that. Come on, here. Here you go, dry yourself off. Get away from her now. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, it's a clean one. That'll be $20. <laughs> Welcome to Orlando. <laughs> Universal does have a tremendous history with the stuff that, I mean, goes yeah. far back. Yeah, this kind of work goes back to the 1920s with makeup pioneer Lon Chaney, known as the man of a thousand faces. He developed his own makeup for classic horror pictures like Phantom of the Opera, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, a brilliant actor who truly suffered for his art. He actually poured bleach in that eye to turn it white. Oh. I made that up. <laughs> he did, however, wear a 40 pound rubber hump and a harness during the Hunchback, and that gave him horrible back problems during the entire filming. Now, most of his techniques remain a secret to this day. He wouldn't tell anyone how he performed his amazing transformations, but his work influenced so many other makeup artists after him. One in particular in the 1930s by the name of Jack Pierce. He's the creator behind classic universal monsters we all know and love, such as the Wolfman, the Mummy, Bride of Frankenstein, Lady Gaga, and Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Tirelessly different creatures of life in the study of real corpses. <laughs> oh, there's Justin Bieber looking for his driver's license. <laughs> The Frankenstein monster makeup is a hefty combination of rubber, plaster, mortician's wax, and some toxic grease paint. Took four hours to apply. Eight hours for the mummy because of all of the makeup, bandages, and mud they needed to cover Boris Karloff's entire body. Universal has made some great monsters and some crappy ones. Mm. <laughs> I love these guys. Cool. My favorite, the big brain creature from this island Earth. Come with me, Earth Lady. I want to pinch your badonka donk. <laughs> and in 1968, the industry was changed forever when John Chambers started using latex makeup on his actors during the making of the Planet of the Apes. Nothing. Nothing. 
I told you not to touch the curtain. I wanted to save this for the end of the show. Are I you know. Thinking? No. You said don't. Um, the, you said don't look in there because right. I want you to see it with everybody else. Right. Right. And, and I was like, alarm. and I was like, oh, okay. okay. But the alarm goes off and somebody messes with it. Oh. Okay. You're the only other person on stage. I didn't. How did the alarm go off then? I didn't do it. <laughs> What happened then? I just was standing here and that kid right there got mad and he got his mom wet and he threw something at the curtain. And I looked at him and I was like, don't get involved. And he was like, stay out of it, old lady. <laughs> <laughs> you like your old lady? Dude. She's not a lady. Thank you. <laughs> She's a rocket curtain. You did? <laughs> Little delinquent? What's your name? Gavin. Gavin, where are you from? Pennsylvania. That figures. <laughs> You're what, 10? What? Whatever. We're just playing with you. I don't care if you threw anything or not, okay? I just want to make sure you're having a good time today. You are. Good. That's what's important. I want you to know something, okay, Gavin? For the rest of the show, Watching you, and a hawk from Pennsylvania. <laughs> See, this isn't the Magic Kingdom. I don't have to be nice to the children. Okay, we're done. Not right. right. Well, that was good. Thank you for that. I never know what you're for. He's just a kid, all right, and he admitted it. So applaud his honesty and just move on. Okay. You're talking about how you make monsters with playtex. Um, yeah. You mean latex? Latex. Latex. What did I say? You said playtex. That's different. Yeah, well, they create different monsters. I know. Um, now, a few years ago, Universal Studios did a remake of The Wolfman. Let's roll that clip. Right here, we have Academy Award winning makeup artist Rick Baker. For The Wolfman, he drew up conceptual drawings based on actor Benito Del Toro, who played The Wolfman. And in some cases, he drew over photographs. And from these drawings, sculpts were created and used as reference to build latex appliances later glued onto Del Toro's face. This process would take roughly three to four hours, and that's only from the neck up. For the rest of the body, we have these foam rubber suits where thousands of hairs were individually knotted by hand. Amazing work. And they had leg extensions so he could have these realistic werewolf-like movements. Or somebody leaving City Walk at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> rawr, rawr, Gavin! <laughs> he also fabricated edible body parts made out of licorice and honeycomb so that Del Toro can actually eat his victims while filming. Amazing details in that movie. Yeah, and Rick Baker has won how many Academy Awards? Seven, yeah, the seven votes for the Wolfman. Mm -hmm. He's won Academy Awards for Men in Black, Harry the Hendersons. Ed Wood. Ed Wood, the Grinch. Yeah. His very first Academy Award was for this film. Kids, what movie is this? American Werewolf in London. American Werewolf in London, that's right. This came out in 1981. Rick Baker's work in this film was so innovative, he won his first Academy Award. In fact, it was the first Academy Award ever given out for special effects makeup. This is a tremendous scene, yeah. and you see the actor changing into the wolf. Yeah. How exactly did Rick Baker do that back in the 80s? I'll show you. In the scene you just saw at the beginning was actor David Naughton in latex makeup. You see his eyes open up and then his face grows. To help film the rest of the scene, Rick Baker built these bad boys called change o heads <laughs> We have a fiberglass understructure here based on David Naughton's features, and then he fabricated latex masks that stretched over that. They're running on a system of pneumatics. And that's air pressure. Yep, yeah, yes. Yeah, so Air pressure. Air tank and these pistons here move in and out. And uh, these had to be used for a lot of close up shots, so the details had to be great. I mean, right down to the air brushing on the latex, we have real porcelain dental appliances and real human hair. Really? That's real hair? Yeah. Where do you get real hair? Pennsylvania. Yeah? Kids, kids from Pennsylvania. No kidding. <laughs> Oh, hey, Gavin, what's up? And the Wolfman remake, though, the werewolves are different than this. They are different. Yeah, they use a lot of CGI in the Wolfman. Right? Which is um, computer-generated imagery. That's right. I have one final clip here. Now, folks, when mechanical or practical makeup effects like these guys aren't good enough, today we can use a computer to help bring the monsters to life. 
We have a digital version of Del Toro here so that an artist could actually morph, shift, and change his facial structure in real time. In addition to this, we have apps for hair and fur. And it used to be you'd have to draw each one of those hairs individually on a computer, which would take forever. But these apps that they created help speed up that process. Now, computers are an amazing tool to use, folks, but only when they're combined with some practical makeup effects like these guys and a great story and a true performance. Nightmares can really come true. That is amazing. So, if you guys, let's hear it for Mark James. Isn't he great? Mark James! Victory shoulders indeed. You want to go ahead and show this off? Because it's Nikki Otai. Can you help me? Yeah, come on over here. I want you to put on this high voltage vest. No. I'm, I want you to put on this low voltage vest. This no voltage vest. It's the same vest. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to do anything behind the vest. Bilma! You remember Bilma? Let's get back up there, Bilma! 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 You know, because you have been such a good sport, the Say Gracias Universal is going to give you and your familia a free three-day cruise brochure. <gasps> it's fun to be on the plane. To Bolivia. Can you see? Put this on your right hand. No. Don't look me. Put this on your head. No. Uh -oh. You're a Bolivian Power Ranger. <laughs> You're wearing what we call a telemetry suit. You're going to remote control a creature I've made. You're going to be like a high-tech puppeteer. Are you able to understand anything I'm saying? No. Awesome. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's bring out the puppet. Drum roll, please. Let's bring round of applause. Somebody got it for Hayden. Hey. Awesome. Yeah. That's for a children's show? Yeah. <laughs> He's for the final episode of Dora the Explorer. <laughs> she learns to run Mui Rapido. Oh. But not fast enough. I know. <laughs> okay. Dora. Uh, Velma, you have sensors. Sensores, sensores, sensores. It'll pick up your movements and zzz, relay them to Eddie. So when you move, Wait, he will move. Wait, yeah. I will turn on the electricidad. Zzz. Mm -hmm. You will uh, for like five, seven secundos. Uh, but you won't remember it. No recuerdo nada. And when you wake up, your pantalones will be agua. I'm just going to take a photo. Take a photo. Okay, so. It's for the insurance company. All right. Now put your manos here at your side. Don't move. Powers on. He's going to reset to a neutral position while I sink up the best. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, sure. Totally normal. All right. Here we go. Hey, it's working. <laughs> That's your movement right there. Basic motion capture technology. It's been around for years. It's really nothing new. We've been using it to keep Ozzy Osbourne alive since the late 80s. <laughs> Center the elbow here, like this. Look at that. <laughs> I like big butts, and I cannot lie. <laughs> you like big butts? Um, te gusta culo grande? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I find the other hand. Or that one. All right. <laughs> Wait for the kids. Hola, kids. I'm Eddie. I live under your bed. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not I live under Gavin's bed. <laughs> okay, put your hand here. Take a bow. Okay, and then back up. And then put your hand up by your side. Mono bottom. There you go. I'll turn the vest off. And the power is off as well. Let's hear it for Bilma! Yeah. 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 before you go, Bilma, this photo is for you to say gracias. Let's hear it for Bilma!
I was so worried about you. I'm glad you're being. Yay! <laughs> I'm fine too, thanks for asking. Okay, let's hear from our team! Exit to your right through the automatic doors. For your safety, we ask that you do not go up on stage. We hope you enjoy the show and enjoy the rest of your day at Universal Orlando. Big thanks. Big Big thanks to Scott and Tracy for recording that and sharing that with us here at Monster Kid Radio. Again, go back to DisneyIndiana.com and check out their previous episodes to hear about their entire vacation that took place. Most of it's Disney-centric. I mean, the show is called Disney Indiana, but they do talk a little bit about their experiences at Universal as well. Scott and Tracy are terrific podcasters. One might even say that they're legendary. And to have them share their talents with us here on Monster Kid Radio, well, we're truly touched. In a good way. Monster Kid Radio is a registered service mark of Monster Kid Radio LLC. All original content of Monster Kid Radio by Monster Kid Radio LLC is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0, unported license. Of course, that does not apply to the song Scaramanga. That belongs to the band The Phantom Four. It appears on their album Morgana and appears on Monster Kid Radio with their permission. Talk to everybody next week. 